Praise the Lord. Ah, the church is quiet today. Are we? Uh, it's, it's rain falling upon us. The rain of God's blessings. Hallelujah. Well, we, we want to share a few things. When I say we, I'll tell you who we are. You know, last Sunday, we were not, some of us were not here. Three of us were not here. And we, 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 we took the privilege of traveling to Abuja for extended leadership. And the whole idea was, let's bring our thoughts together. Let's pray. Let's seek the Lord concerning the church, concerning the land. And whatever God lays in our hearts, we, you know, there was one time my wife accused me, you know, he said, people, you just go and do all this thing, all this thing, you come back. Does it, how does it benefit those that you are out there? And it is true. We cannot go and seek God for the church and we do not bring the reports back to the church. A scripture that came to me is 2 Timothy 2, verse 6. It says, The husband man that laboreth shall be the first partaker. Now, whatever we do, we are laboring and we are the farmers, we are farming. And being the first partaker means it will benefit you, your Jerusalem. And uh, we cannot go out and seek God and put our minds together and we come back and we, there are many things we do. You know, if we continue to do the same things over and over, like the Lord told me yesterday, very clearly, if you continue to do the same things over and over again, you cannot expect different results. Praise God. Do we want different results? Do we want new results? Then we have to learn new things. Praise God. And we feel that we owe the church a responsibility to come back and give account. So I will start, but I believe that with three of us that went, everything about ministry is perspective. And I believe that each of us will give a perspective. I'm not saying what I will give is the only perspective that I see, but I will give my perspective and somebody else can give on. So at the end of the day, if we repeat a few things, it's not grievous. But if we say different things, it just shows that the Lord prepared for us a table and we must partake of it. We also use the opportunity to pray for Nigeria, prophesy over Nigeria, and get the mind of the Lord for Nigeria. So maybe in the course of that, one of us might share that. My burden today is not in that area, and I will share with us what my burden is. But please, let's, let's, let's believe that what he says to one, he says to all. Praise the Lord. Now, basically, the theme and the burden of our gathering was spiritual operations. Spiritual what? Operations in the New Testament church. So there is more than one operation. Spiritual operations. And the things that we do here, you know, the Bible says to be carnally minded is what? Is death. So we are not doing carnal operations here. It's a spiritual gathering. And the things that we relate, the relationships we have, are supposed to be spiritual. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must do what? Worship him how? In spirit and in truth. So we, we, we gather together and say, God, how, what are the components of spiritual oppression in a New Testament church? We are not Old Testament. We are not in the days of Moses. We are people with Holy Ghost dispensation. And we see that New Testament came after the, uh, the Lord ascended. So when he ascended into heaven, what happened? Huh? Somebody help me. He gave gifts unto men. So God dropped some things. First of all, the Holy Ghost came. Hallelujah. And that's the hallmark of the New Testament church. The Holy Ghost. The dispensation of the Holy Ghost. But then, so many, there are some cardinal principles. And we need to, in this work, remind ourselves. We need to remind ourselves, guys. If not, we shall miss it. Hallelujah. So once in a while, we need to go back and say, guys, let us remember where we started. Let's start this morning with... Uh, Acts 2. Acts chapter 2. I'm going to 42, but let's do 41, 42. 
and maybe 40, 41, 42. Well, we are going to 42. Praise God. So we want to look at spiritual prayer. I'm not going to give all the ramifications. Like I said, I did not go alone. And I believe that every one of us, the three of us, can will give different perspectives. If for any reason I take much time and it captures today's meeting, next Sunday, uh, the, uh, another one of us will take the next one. Praise God. But let us be patient. The Bible says, He that believeth shall do what? Shall not make haste. Hallelujah. We shall be patient. The things of God, we want to look at it and digest them. And the Bible says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, do what? think on these things. So let's we'll look at scripture today. Hallelujah. Now we start from that. It says and with many other words he did testify and exhort saying save yourselves from the unto, from this untoward generation. Now we are talking about the day of Pentecost when Peter stood up and when the, the, the Holy Ghost came down and people were surprised and so let's go to 41. I'm going to 42 to 42 but let's go 41. And then, what happened? Let's take it. One, two. And they that gladly received this word, what happened? They were baptized. And the same day, there was added unto them, what? About 3,000 stones. So you see, that is the first expression. You see how the New Testament church came about because it comes by the fact that when he ascended, he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be done what? And deal with what? Power from on high. So that begins to show us the hallmark of this church that we are looking at. When you say, what church are you? You say, well, I am of the Mosaic faith. I'm of the, no, you are of the New Testament church. Hallelujah. He has made us able ministers of what? of the New Testament. So let's go to uh, 42. Let's take that. One, two. And what? They continued how? Steadfastly. In what? The apostles' doctrine. One, two. Fellowship. Two, th three. Breaking of bread. Prayers. How many of them? We shall come back to that. Let's take 43. And what happened? And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles because the power of God came down. Hallelujah. And what do we hear? We hear that they continued steadfastly. So Bible scholars have defined it as the four pillars. The four pillars of the New Testament church. If you Google or you go anywhere, you look at it, you see the four pillars of the new church, you will see these things. Apostles' doctrine. What again? Fellowship. What again? Breaking of bread. Communion. What again? Prayers. Hallelujah. So you see that and you say, ah, why four? You know, numbers are very important in the word of God, in the Bible. Am I correct? When you say three, you say, ah, three stands for something. Seven, seven stands for something. Ten, ten stands for something. Five stands for something. Four, two stands for something. What is four? Four stands for stability. Four stands for foundation. Four stands for completeness. And four stands for order. Praise God. You are seated on a chair. Now, how many legs do you have there? Huh? And you say, ah, God, why did you not make it six now? Why did you make it four? How many corners of the earth do we have? Four. Hallelujah. I say, no, it's just by accident. Eh? It's just by accident. How many seasons do we have? Four. Ah, ah. Four again. Hallelujah. So you see that four actually represents completeness. The north, the south, the east, the west. You say, ah, God just made it. When you look at the Garden of Eden, the water that came out of the garden to the river, that came out of Eden to the garden, was four. Four flows. I say, ah, why? Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 1. It talks about the four living creatures. Daniel. The four beasts. Revelation. The four, why? Because four for God is the symbol of completeness, stability, balance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So when we look at the word of God, nothing happens to God's word by accident. So we are looking at these four pillars. I'm not going to talk about the four. I'm going to talk about one. I'm going to zero in on one. Like I said, we all have different dimensions. I want to zero on one because before we, we even got there, I know that God had been dealing with me on it. Hallelujah. And I'm going to share with us because I know that these are foundational principles. You see, the, the word of God does not come to us to just leave us or just to, to, for merry making. No, the word of God comes to us to make us like God. Hallelujah. He said, eh? you want to be like God? Yes. He said, as many as be perfect, let them have this mind. As many as be mature, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Hallelujah. So I want to talk today about prayer. And I want to talk about keeping our watch. <laughs> keeping our watch by prayer. You know, hallelujah. And he said, but we know now, bro, what are you Just cool down. Hallelujah. Huh? Eh? And let us let us go through it and let's be patient with one another. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keeping our watch. And I want to add by prayer. Because you'll see that there are other components of being a watchman. Hallelujah. But we are going to emphasize on one of those pillars today. Prayer. Because a prayerless Christian is what? It's a powerless Christian. Hallelujah. If you cannot pray, <laughs> I tell you, power not there. And prayer, <laughs> you see, we may come out like this and look, but we wrestle not what? Against flesh and blood. So there's a war that is going on. But what? Against principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Unless you want to continue to be a dwarf Christian, if you want to grow in God, your prayer life must also go up. Hallelujah. So let's, let's look, let's take a few definitions before we start. Watch. What does it mean to watch? Because you'll be hearing watch, watch, keeping your watch, 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 watch. So let's start with that. What does it mean to watch? To keep vigil, especially for devotional reasons. So when you hear watch, <laughs> you must, you cannot be watching and you are, you are sleeping. Hallelujah. You cannot be watching. I say to keep vigil. And vigil gives you an impression that maybe it's in a particular time of the day. Okay, let's look at a few other definitions. A period of time for watching or keeping guard. A period of time for watching. You say, I watch again. Keeping guard. Okay, you keep guard. <laughs> so we are, we are security men. You will see that we are. Are we not soldiers? Eh? Who is not a soldier here? Endure hardness as what? A good soldier of Christ. So we are all soldiers. Hallelujah. Another definition. Keeping awake for some special purpose. Hmm. So you see, huh? watch and sleep. <laughs> they have to, they, they, they may not necessarily go together. Hallelujah. You must be awake. I remember I had one. Uh, security man and he said ah Oga I dream I see say you do something for Cameroon <laughs> he was very proud that he was he was telling me his dream <laughs> but he was reporting himself <laughs> hallelujah because a watchman must not sleep but he said Oga I see you you did do something for Cameroon and truly I was doing something in Cameroon but I, it was it, he was reporting himself. So if you're a watchman, hallelujah. That's not the time that you dream. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us. Eh, Sister Rose is laughing. Hallelujah. Eh, he was very proud to come and tell me his dream. But he was reporting himself. What are you doing sleeping? You are supposed to be awake to be watching people. The Lord will help us. Amen. So let's begin. Let's begin with a few. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. We we'll begin with that. We may do a few scriptures today, but please be patient. Matthew 26. 
we are looking at keeping our watch by prayer emphasis there will be other things that you see in the process of how you keep your watch but prayer is the underscore of it praise the lord matthew 26 and let's go to verse 39 matthew 26 and we'll go to verse 39 matthew 26 it looks like the people there okay let me see whether i can also okay uh, if it's here it might be good okay and he went a little further and fell on his face and what did he do he prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass away from me and what did he say again nevertheless not as i will but as thou wilt okay let's go to 40. and he cometh unto the disciples and what happened he find that them what asleep so what did he say to them he said to peter what could he not watch with me one hour question and the bible says the testimony of jesus christ is what it's a story in the spirit of prophecy what is prophecy the mind of god being revealed to us so the story of jesus christ is not a story that is past it's something he's telling the church hallelujah Amen. when you hear the story of jesus yeah, he was the, they were sleeping no he's talking about today hallelujah let's go on so it goes on again watch and pray why did he say that let's continue that ye not you enter not into temptation do we still have temptation today yes. huh? so the injunction to watch and pray is as present and as relevant as it was then is there persecution of jesus now yes. huh? yes. are they persecuting jesus now yes. hallelujah so they still okay let's go let's not uh, jump the gun the spirit indeed is willing but what the flesh is weak let's continue give me 40. he went away again so second time the second time and prayed saying oh my father if this cup may not pass away from me what should happen except i drink it thy will be done and he came that's the second time and what happened and found them asleep again for their eyes were what is that a good score huh? their eyes were heavy <laughs> lord may you not find our eyes heavy yeah. but you don't sleep too is good but god is saying <laughs> there is something that we need to do hallelujah you begin to see why prayer was one of the pillars hallelujah yeah, but we come for night vigil now let's wait let's go again we're on 44 and he left them and went again and prayed what how many times the third time saying the same words okay let's go to 45 then commit he to his disciples and said unto them what did he say let's say it. sleep on now and take your rest behold the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners wow is that a good score for the people of god help me or let's take 46 and then we ask ourselves rise let us be going behold he is at hand that doth betray me you say well god had ordained it yes god had allowed it but would you say that it was a good score hallelujah for the people of god maybe if they had watched and prayed they would have known the, the mind of god being revealed to them that it is the will of god but they were sleeping hallelujah and then there was a warning which we remember watch and pray that why you do not fall into what temptation and we know temptation is as constant as it was then it's still here now the devil like a roaring lion is doing what seeking who to devour it's still going around so can we watch less now eh? Can we watch less now and say, well, the Lord has gone there, so we can watch. let's not watch again. Is that what he's saying? Okay, let's take Revelation. Let's at least let's take something that will comfort us and then we we'll go to what the responsibilities are. Let's go to Revelation 3. Revelation 3.
and we go to well I'm going to verse 10 but I think we should we could start from verse 8 Revelation 3 and we'll go to verse 8 hallelujah okay Revelation 3 verse 8 and on, unto the angel of the church in Sar eh? oh no give me verse 8 sorry thank you for for and okay no let's take 7 maybe we can at least have some no let's not start from the beginning 7 Okay, seven gives us the beginning, even though we are going to ten. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, This thing saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and what happened? No man openeth. Now what that this is the message. I know thy works. Behold, I have said before thee what an open door, and no man can shut it. Now look at some of the things, attributes of that church. For thou hast what a little strength, but what have you done? You have kept my words. And what again have you done? You have not denied my name. That shows faithfulness. That shows faithfulness. I hope we will be like that church. Faithfulness, although we don't have much power, it just speaks about, you know, when I look at that church, I see it talks about me. You know, consider your calling, how not many mighty, how not many great are called. But God has chosen you, not because you are mighty, not because you have strength. Eh? The foolish thing is to confound the wise. It's not because of your strength. You have little strength. But you have kept the word of God. May we keep the word of God. Even in these times, guys. May we, may we may it be said like the, like the Philadelphia you kept the word of God. You have not denied God even in these times, because temptation is around. But we shall not deny God. We shall keep His name. That is the attribute of that church. Let's go on. Please don't put it off. We are still on. In fact, we are just looking at the attributes. The message is after that. Let's go to nine. Behold, what will happen? I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, false people, people who are false, hypocrites, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved it. That's a promise. Hallelujah. And why is God giving that promise? Because even though your strength is small, you have kept the word of God. Lord, may we keep your word. Amen. May we not deny your name in this time. It's so easy. Oh boy, this thing I don't try. This thing don't tire me. Lord, keep us. Keep your word and not deny your name. Let's go to verse 10 where we are going. And let's take it together. One, two. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. What will I do? I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. This, it shall come. It's not, hey, God, why? You? It shall come. But God shall keep us away from it. It shall come, but God shall keep us away from it. Hallelujah. We shall come upon all the world to try them that do what? Are we, are we in heaven? We are dwelling upon the earth. Is that not so? So we are those that will be tried. Hallelujah. But God shall keep us away from temptation. Hallelujah. But you know, remember the attributes of Philadelphia. Eh? You have little strength. And you know, Papa, I have little strength. You tell me now to pray from 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning. Say, ah, <laughs> the thing is sweet, oh. But where, Papa, where power are they? Hallelujah. Like you told the disciples, they pray. He come back, they don't sleep. But God will give us strength. I didn't hear amen. amen. We have little strength, but that strength we shall, shall do wonders. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. That is our prayer. Let's take a few more scriptures and then we'll look at a few other things. Now let's look at Isaiah 62. A few scriptures. A few prescriptions on the what, and then we'll go to the how. Hallelujah. Isaiah 62, and we we'll go to verse 7, verse 6. 
we are doing six and seven. Isaiah 62, we do six and seven. Those are some of the things. So I'm taking one of the pillars today, prayers. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, one of us will take some other aspect. But God helped us. We looked at some of these fundamental things because the church must come alive again, especially in these times. The Bible says you should exhort one another how? Daily. While it is called day. Lest any of us be hardened by what? The deceitfulness of sin. These are the days. Temptation. Sin is looking around to deceive. We must hold one another and talk to one another and wake up one another. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we'll see apostle doctrine. Eh? Apostles' teachings of the of the apostles. Very important. Sound teaching in this time. We cannot run away from it. Fellowship. We look at what fellowship talks about. What does it mean to have fellowship? Why should we have fellowship? What are the attributes of fellowship? We also look at communion. What this thing that we do when we come and say, <laughs> hey, we just stand here. What does it mean? Today we are looking at prayer. Hallelujah. God will ground us in Him. Oh, blessed be God. So that when the storms come, it's part of this is part of the preparing for the storms. It's part of the preparation for the storms. Hallelujah. Because that is the hour of temptation. The storm is the temptation. One of the temptations that will come in this time. But we shall not be swept away. We shall not be swept away. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. Give it to me, please. Or oh, I open my Bible. Isaiah 62. Okay. Let's take it. One, two. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. We shall never, never, yeah, never, which means there will be a consistent conduct of this watchman. Never do what? Hold their peace. How? Day nor night. Okay? Ye that make mention of the Lord. Do what? Keep not silence. Give me verse 7. And do what? Give him no rest. Till when? Till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a place in the earth. Watchmen are those people that watch. We, we, we talk about watch. The people that watch. To keep vigil for a purpose, a devotional purpose. To take time. To, let, let, me, let me look at it again so at least we can remember. A period of time for watching or keeping guard. So these are the watchmen. Keeping awake for some special purpose. Watchmen. Keep vigil, especially for devotional reasons. Watchmen. I have said watchmen where? Upon thy walls. Who? Who is Jerusalem? Is the church of God. So the church must have watchmen. Are you a watchman? Are you a watchman? Brother Alex, are you a watchman? Okay. So we are watchmen. Each one of us, <laughs> bro, elders, you are the watchmen or you are watching. No. We are all watchmen. Hallelujah. Because we we'll see scripture. It's talking directly to us. Watch. Watch and pray. Is that? Watch and pray. I say, me? Yes. We must all arise. I know when we talk, when we talk, watch, we say pray, say a night vigil, night vigil, night vigil. But you see, even the reflection of the night vigil shows the prayer life of the church. Of the, the church is individual now. Church is not when we come for night vigil. Church is when we all have been praying and then we come together. So when we come together, each man coming with his own coal from the altar of God, you see fire begin to spark. But when you come, you see how it shows that better not day when we are alone. Because if one can chase what? A thousand. Two shall chase what? If one can chase zero, what happens to two? You chase two zeros. <laughs> Twenty. Hallelujah. May God not be a portion in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. We are laughing, but may that not be a portion. Because the devil must see us and run. <laughs> we shall see scripture. Hallelujah. Devil will see you coolly and run. That is God's purpose for us in this time. Oh, blessed be God. So let's go. Let's take another scripture. 
We'll take a few scriptures and then we'll go to the meat of the matter. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5. And then we'll take Habakkuk too. But first Thessalonians 5. And give me 16. I'm sorry. First Thessalonians 5. Let's go to 16. What does it say? Rejoice how? Evermore. Okay. The next one. What's the next one? Pray without season. Ah, uh -uh. rejoice evermore. Pray without season. Give me the next one. Eighteen. In everything, do what? Give thanks. For why? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If you take sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen, they go together. Rejoice. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is what? It's your strength. Now imagine yourself passing through the storm, going through temptation. But the tonic inside you is the joy. Joy. Hallelujah. And why is there joy? Because you are praying while without season. You say pray without what? Season. Ah. Huh. So it means I should always be constant in prayer. Is it every time we are here in fellowship? So if we are without season, it means we are not having fellowship every time. So if he says pray without, it means inside fellowship and outside fellowship, I must be praying. Am I correct? Okay. <laughs> and he says, in, in everything, what? Give thanks. Give me Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 6. They go together too. Philippians 4, and we take 6. Can we take that one too? Be careful for how many things? Nothing. Nothing. Why? But in everything, how? By prayer. By prayer. Prayer. Foundation. And what? Supplication. Foundation. And what? Thanksgiving. Let your request be made. You see that? Joy, uh, prayer, and thanking God. Hallelujah. So one man, Spurgeon, I'm sure most of us know Spurgeon. Spurgeon said, when joy marries prayer, hallelujah, their first child is gratitude. Praise God. Have you thought of that? Joy. You are joyful because you pray. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And you talk to God. You don't give God rest. The first thing that would, you will give birth to is thanksgiving. Because God will never fail you. God will always give you reason to thank him. Hey, God, thank you. Were it not for the Lord who was on our side. Thank God he has come to save us. Thank God he has heard our cry. Thank God he has not left us in this time. Thank God he came right on time and set us free. Because God will never forgive, forgive forsake us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Habakkuk. We are taking scriptures on watch, watching, and then we'll go to the how. God will help us. Habakkuk, chapter 2. You know, we studied Habakkuk. And we saw that in chapter 1, Habakkuk was confused. He said, why is there so much wickedness? Why are the wicked ones prospering? And why are we the righteous? I go, God, but you are, too, you are too holy to behold evil and wickedness. So verse 2, it began in verse 1. Habakkuk means to embrace. He was ready to embrace, to embrace the challenges. And we are like Habakkuk. God did not say we should run in this day of temptation. He did not say we should run in this day of wickedness. He said perilous times shall come. He did not say we should run. He said, because he said, we are not of them that draw back unto what? Perdition. But we are what? Them that believe to this. Which means we embrace the challenge. Hallelujah. But here, what Habakkuk said. Chapter 1, chapter 2, verses 1. What did he say? I will do what? Stand upon my word. Is that your confession this morning? I will stand upon, which means I will be there. I will, I will stay. I will keep guard. I will not run. Times are tough. If you see Habakkuk chapter 1, things were very negative. But Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch. Is that a confession this morning? 
I'm not hearing anybody. So let us go with Habakkuk and declare. Habakkuk 2, 1. 1, 2. I will do what? I will stand upon my watch and do what? Set me upon the tower. What will happen? And we watch to do what? To see what he will say unto me. The Lord shall speak to you. He said, when we get to that crossroad, uh, uh, is it Isaiah 30, verse 20? When you get, to, when, when you, the, the, the bread of adversity and the water of affliction comes to you. He says, your instructors will not be far from you. God will not leave you silent. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. But fear not the challenges that are before you. Because God will not leave you. In, Habakkuk, in Isaiah 30, 21, he says, you will hear a voice behind you say what? This is the way. Walk in it. Kule, you will not be left forsaken. Hallelujah. So Habakkuk came and said, I will stand upon my watch. And I will see. I will watch to see what he will say. He will say something. You are watching. You are on guard. When you say watch, I'm watching. I'm guarding. I'm looking at what the devil is doing. I'm not sleeping. I'm not. But God will speak something to you. Hallelujah. And how does faith come? By hearing. Did that be speaking to you because he wants to quicken your faith? He will say something to you, and that he will quicken your faith. Hallelujah! He says, I will see, I will hear what the Lord will say unto me, and what I will answer when I'm reproved. And we we'll go to verse 2, we are ending in verse 3. And he says, And the Lord answered me and said, What did he say? Write the vision. <laughs> Is there a vision? Are you appointed unto a vision, Sir Baby? There's a vision for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Write what? The vision. And do what? Make it plain upon tables. Why? That he may run that readeth it. Eh? God, I thought we are going to perish. <laughs> we will not perish. Oh. You see, there was one story of one man of God. He said he was in a plane. And the plane was woo, 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 turbulent, turbulent. <laughs> He said, he said, God, you know this plane cannot crash down inside this plane. Because you have not finished with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Guys, God has not finished with us. Nigeria will not be extinguished. It's not possible. Hallelujah. Because of you, Nigeria no go scatter. I am saying something. You think I'm being reckless. I'm telling you the truth. Eh? Some of you know that we have opportunity to, to jackpot. Hallelujah. Jackpot where where? Completely without any resistance. But I know that there is still hope in this country. Hallelujah. Eh? My wife is looking at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because she has because she has she has joined me. Hallelujah. I see, I see light. Hallelujah. And I'm still seeing light. People will not laugh. Oh. Hallelujah. Nigeria no go wipe. You know, it's not possible. Nigeria will get better. I'm just writing today. Hallelujah. But let's continue. We are not on three yet. Is that right, division? My dear, division is for an appointed time. Yes, oh, glory. Let's do it. Let's do verse three. Then we'll move. Let's look at Habakkuk 2 3, please. Let us believe God. Hallelujah. We are not here by happenstance. We are not here because, uh, uh, no, it shall happen. Hallelujah. Tell somebody it shall happen. Nigeria shall not scatter. Because of us, Nigeria will not scatter. Now, let's go. It says, let's take, that's verse 3, right? One, two, let's take it. For what? The vision is yet for what? Do you believe that? Do you believe that, Ejofo? The vision is yet for an appointed, tell somebody the vision is yet for an appointed time. And that vision involves you too. You are part of that vision. Hallelujah. He said the vision is yet for what? An appointed time. But at what? At the end it shall speak and not lie. Oh. Though it tarry, what should you do? Wait for it. Why? Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And the difference, the, 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 the period between the time that it tarry and the time that it come, what should you be doing? Watching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Watching. Stay upon your watch like Habakkuk. Hallelujah. And you say, ah, bro, this is in the sweet oh. But let's go to the how. Because we must not give a message and it hangs there. It must come down. Praise God. And God, in his mercy, will show us the how. Let's go. 
Let's look at it. And you see that eh? this thing is attainable. <laughs> you serve, you can do it. Hallelujah. It's not for, for magicians. <laughs> It's for you and I. Hallelujah. We are able to go up and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on the way to hinder, God has surely given us victory. Mark 13. Mark 13. Remember the spirit, the testimony of Jesus Christ is what? Okay. Mark 13. Let's start. We are looking at some things. And we are beginning to move from, from there. We we'll touch ground. Maybe we we'll touch ground. Mark 13. And we we'll go to uh, verse 35. Mark 13. We we'll go to verse 35. Now. Watch ye therefore. Is he talking to us? Eh? Okay. Watch ye therefore. Why? For you know not when the master of the house cometh. Is that not true? Okay. The master of the house, even now, he comes, he visits us, doesn't he? But look at the time frames. One is what? At even. Another time is when? At midnight. Another time is when? At cock crowing. Another time is when? You know it tells you about the four watches of the night? That scripture that you see there tells you about the four watches of the night. Hallelujah. Let's go again. Watch therefore for you know not, no, let's, let's go there back to 35. For you know not when the master of the house cometh at even six o'clock to nine o'clock. <laughs> Is one watch. It's even. Is it night? Is it midnight? It's not. But it's six o'clock. To it is even. Evening has started. That's one watch. But if you look at the Bible, you see that in 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 the, in the night there are four watches, and we'll see scriptures now that begin to. So you see some things happen at specific times in the Bible, and God did not put it there for for happenstance. So we must. As students of the Bible, we look at it. It says, study to show that it says what? Unto men, unto God. When you study, God begins to show you. It's not for, so I, I come, so brother Mike, I know I can. Oh, unto God. Because he's telling you something. As watchmen, study to show yourself approved unto God. As what? Who? Who? Eh? Oh yeah, give us the scripture. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Uh, please put it down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's all of us see. Study to show thyself unto God. Eh? You cannot get it. Eh? 2 Timothy 2.15. Let's look at it. Who need not to be ashamed? Let's look at it. Okay, 2 Timothy 2.15. What does it say? 1, 2. Study to show thyself approved. Unto who? Thank you. A workman, and I remember, that needed not to be ashamed means confused. Perplexed. You are confused. Hey, 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 hey. You begin to, hey, hey, hey. That's why you are studying. So that when things come, you cool down. Because God has given you an insight that there are four watch times in the night. Hallelujah. There are four over the night. There are four. There's even, there's, uh, with, 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 uh, there's midnight, there's what? Cockroach, and there's what? Morning. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. What man that needed not to be ashamed? Do what? Rightly, not wrongly, dividing. That's why you're studying. Hallelujah. So let's go. Now we go to another scripture before we start looking at some other scriptures. Look, Luke 12. Luke 12. And we'll go to 37. Luke 12, 37. 38. He said, God, visit us. Oh, Lord, visit us. <laughs> so and Jesus Christ, we say, I know he was talking of the time when he will come and visit. Is he not visiting you today? 
Are you not praying for God to visit you? Hallelujah. Hey, Big Joe, are we not praying for God to visit us? And he comes and visits us. There are times you pray and God visits you. Hallelujah. He visits your situation. Luke 12, and we'll go to 37. One, two. Blessed. Well, let's take it. One, two. Blessed are what? Those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing what? Watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall guide himself and make them what? To sit down to meet. And will come forth and do what? Serve them. Huh. Can God still make us sit down to meet with him now? Can he serve us even now? Let's go to 38. And if he shall come, what did he say? He shall come when? So there's a first watch. And find them, or come in where? So there's a third watch. And find them, so what happens? So there's a first watch, there's a second watch, there's a third watch, there's a fourth watch. We saw it. Even midnight, early morning. Is it early morning? Eh? Cockroach, and what else? Morning. Oh, brother, now God, they open up. So even in this time, there are four watches of the night. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's continue. Let's look at a few things in the Bible because I have it here that strategic events take place during the night and early morning. Strategic events. Now, before we even look at scripture, remember uh, Ruth. Remember Ruth. You know, we just studied Ruth. Eh? And she went to Boaz. Did she go to Boaz at midnight? No, was she there before midnight? Was she waiting for Boaz? Did Boaz come at a particular time? Eh? Okay, hallelujah. So you see that there are times, it, there are times, there are seasons, hallelujah. There are seasons, even in this, I watch it. And we need to become sensitive to those seasons, hallelujah. As watchmen, make we not just they sleep last on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now let's go. Uh, Jacob wrestled with with the angel. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Jacob, one example. Genesis 32. Maybe we'll take from 22. 22 to 31. Genesis 32. 22 to and he rose up that night, I'm reading 22 now, and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the ford Jagob, Jabok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them, sent over that he had. Let's go. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled the man with him. When? Until the break of the day. What was that? Was that not early morning? Eh? So was it, if he was not watching, would he have sustained to that time? Eh? Bumi? Are you there? I not see Bumi today. Oh, oh that, that your voice, I didn't hear it. Hallelujah. So let's go to 26, 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day break it. And he said, what? I will not let thee go. Why? Except thou bless me. Was this an, an encounter? Hallelujah. Now, Kunle, begin to look at it. There are times when you, you encounter God. Hallelujah. And we need to be sensitive, even in prayer, knowing that there is an objective. There is somewhere that we are going. That's why I say, watch and pray. Oh, blessed be God. Let's move on. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Now, if you remember, was it, did they not wrestle until early morning? So this discussion that they're having now is what time? Morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's move. And he said, and he said, and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Why? Let's take it. One, 
For as a prince has thou power with God and with men, and what has happened? And has prevailed. Okay. So move to 29. We are going, we are stopping at um, 30. Sorry, we are stopping at 31. So let's move. And Jacob asked him and he said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask me after my name? And he blessed him there. So let's go to it. And Jacob called the name of, of the place Peniel. For I have seen God how? And my life is what? Preserved. Okay, let's quickly go to another. Genesis 28. We're going back a little bit. The same Jacob. Genesis 28, give me 10, and we'll run to 22. And Jacob went out from, from Beersheba, and went toward where? Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place, and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place, and put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to do what? To sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Move on. And behold, the Lord stood above it, and said, I am the Lord thy God, the Lord God of Abraham, and thy father, and the God of Isaac, and the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it unto thy seed. Move on. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread about to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God was blessing him. And behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into thy land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. So move. And Jacob awakes. Where? Out of his sleep. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew you not. So was it night time? Okay. Praise God. Let's move. We are moving fast. I want to give a few examples more and then we'll go. Moses. Exodus. Exodus 14. I will take a few Old Testament and I go to the New Testament. Exodus 14 and give me 24. Exodus 14, 24. 1, 2. And it came to pass that in the morning, <laughs> do you see it? In the morning what? Watch. Hallelujah. You see, eh? So Bible get unto. There is a watch in the morning. That's what it means. In the watch in the morning. Glory be to God. In the morning watch, what happened? The Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of cloud and did what? Troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels and they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians give me 26 we'll wrap up there and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen what time was that? morning watch hallelujah let's go again let's try a few new testament things matthew matthew 14 matthew 14 matthew 14 and uh, give me 25 we're going to 25 to 29 we'll just take one or two and then i'm sure we we are beginning to see that there are certain hours hallelujah there are certain hours hallelujah one two are we ready what does he say and when in the fourth watch of the night ooh. <laughs> you see huh? four there is evening there's night midnight there's early morning and there's what there's cockroach. There's morning. Hallelujah. And in the fourth watch, the fourth one. Hallelujah. And if you look at it, it's between six and between three a.m. and nine and six a.m. 
in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, doing what? Walking on the sea. Continue. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for what? For fear. But straight away, Jesus said unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is he, it is I. Be not what? Afraid. Continue. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. This was the morning watch, the fourth watch. Praise God. May God bring us to such levels where we stay on our watch and the Lord appears to us. Yeah. Brother Robinson, do you believe that? You can stay on your watch and God begins to communicate with you. God begins to minister to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You say, hey, hey. we can stay on our watch and we begin to hear things and begin to see revelations of God. Scriptures begin to drop on us. Hallelujah. We can stay on our watch. We will come to the practicals of this thing. We are not talking theory. We'll come down. Hallelujah. And you begin to get revelations. <laughs> but there, there are certain times when the environment is clearer and it's, it's easier for God to communicate with you. Even you as a person, you are more settled at that time. The interferences that go on, even in your mind, the business, the buying and selling that go on are not as much as that time. God's ability to get your attention is easier at that time. Hallelujah. The things of God, you can understand them. We are Christians. There are certain times when it becomes easier for you to hear not, not that, that earthquake, not that rain, not that thunder, but that still small voice. Hallelujah. It's not every time. When it's nine o'clock, I begin to rush to court. I begin to, <laughs> with the still small voice, they talk, say, I may not hear it. Hallelujah. But there are times when you are quiet with God and God begins to minister to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I tell you guys, the Holy Ghost can help you. It's your instructor. <laughs> the Holy Ghost can help you if you begin to take, believe God for these times. When that time comes, you begin to see the Holy Spirit waking you up. Hallelujah. You say, oh, I don't woke up at that time. I want to use the rest of But when you look at the time, <laughs> five minutes to three. You look at the time, three minutes past five. <laughs> or five minutes past three. But you see that it's always around that time. Because God is already used to. The Holy Ghost is telling you this is the time to meet with the Lord. Hallelujah. Guys, let us not begin to see magic. There is no magic in this, you know. Fellowship with God can be real. May we begin to see the things that God wants us to see. I'm not hearing amen. Make fear not catch us all. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want to look at angels appearing with shepherds, but let's leave that. So, I have something here. During the fourth watch, there was significant power encounters that make a way for the kingdom of God to penetrate the earth. Certain encounters make a way for the kingdom of God to penetrate the earth in the early mornings, fourth watch. If you, you see, some, some people will tell you midnight, midnight, I don't know. But I see God, for me as a person, maybe for you it might be midnight. But there's something about those watches. If you believe God and God begins to walk with you on it, the Holy Ghost will wake you up at that time. My wife is here. She knows what I'm talking about. The Holy Ghost will wake you up. And you know that God has set an appointment with you. And you say, how do I do it? Now, good question. Don't go there with an agenda. You are meeting with God. You can begin to praise God. Hallelujah. You know it is just, I'm just worshiping with God. I'm just staying on my watch. I'm just staying around the presence of God. You can begin to, you can begin with praise because praise opens an entrance to the presence of God. You can just be blessing God. Don't be doing that. No. <laughs> just be blessing God. Hallelujah. You just see God carry you. You just find songs coming. I mean, I'm talking about my experience. You f just find yourself, just so you, one song will connect to another song. You just, before you know what, a scripture drops into you. You open your Bible. You look. You are still watching. Hallelujah. You are still watching. Before you know what, God has laid a burden for you. And you begin to pray. 
Glory be to God. Guys, that's why the Bible says we should exhort one another. God is giving graces unto his people, even in this time, to stand the trials and the testings that are upon the earth. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start simple. Don't go and say, eh, eh, I must open revelation. You don't need revelation. <laughs> begin to bless the Lord. And the songs will begin to come. Hallelujah. The songs will be, and you, before you know what you do, ah, 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 before you know what time, ah, and it is a time. God knows it's a time he can meet with you. And when God begin, when you begin to stay faithful in it, God begins to wake you up. Try it. Hallelujah. I am not asking you to, to say, brother, like, go and ask God. We, and tell the Holy Ghost if it wake me up. Hallelujah. You begin to see God waking you up. 2.55, you see, you're up. 3.10, you, ah, yeah, you look time. You look at you see it. Hallelujah. My wife knows what I'm talking about. And you be, you don't 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 go there with agenda. No, hey, I must ask God this. No, no. The Holy Spirit, when we know not how to pray, what happens? The Spirit helps us to pray. Hallelujah. With groanings, which just go. First, first of all, the one you can start with, praise God. Hallelujah. Because he inhabits what? The praises of his people. God inhabits the praises. You cannot praise God. Praise God. And God will not come. Down. It's not possible. Hallelujah. And he will, you, you see, communication is a two-way traffic. When you talk, God will talk to you too. When you talk, God will talk to you. When you praise, praise he be, you keep, you be quiet. It's, an, it's a time of the hour when even the spirits know that warfare is going on on your behalf. The spirits are there fighting for you. Oh, blessed be God. These things are not written for us as examples. Okay, let's go. Let's go to a few more things. Let's leave that now. Because he said, ah, bro, what are you talking? Bro, I beg, just wait. We are, we are all looking at it. It's the word of God. I want to move now. I want to move now to Job. The book of Job. The book of Job, and we'll go to verse 38. Very soon we'll start praying. Job chapter 38, I'm sorry. And we're going to verse 12. Job 38, and we'll go to 12. Job 38, and we'll go to 12. Job 38, and we'll go to 12. Okay. Somebody help me with Amplified too. We're going to read King James and we're going to read Amplified. Are we there now? Huh? Okay. Now, what, what is the first uh, verse that we see there? What is, what, let's take it together. One, two. Has thou done what? Commanded who? The morning. When? Since thy days. And cause the day spring to know his place. Lord God is asking you. Since your days, since you were born, you, you can bring King James uh, amplified. Since you were born, Kule, eh? Taye, since you were born, that's what he says, since thy days, have you commanded the morning? <laughs> Do you just wake up and you just receive money? Have you commanded the morning? <laughs> In the Bible, oh. Uh, me, have you woken up and said morning <laughs> you, you, you submit to the will of God for my life today you will respect God's order for me you will not bring your own you will not oppress me today he's asking you uh, do we have Amplified let's take the first verse in Amplified this first verse because we are going to 15 what did he say since your days began eh? let, let, or should we take it together one two since your days, when did your days began, be, be, begin, Sister Eunice? When you were born. Oh, since you were born. What have you done, Sister Rosalind? Have you ever commanded the morning or caused the dawn to know its place? Have you, is it concerning the works of my hands? What should you do? Eh? Have you ever commanded your morning? Now, now they ask you, let's go to verse 2. Verse 13, sorry. So that the, the, the light, so that light may take hold of the corners of the earth and do what? Shake the wickedness out of it. You see what, why you have to command it? You 
don't enter and be a slave to that day, you can decree unto that day the liberty of God that has been given to you. That's what he's asking, telling Job. Have you commanded? Have you commanded your morning? Or have you commanded it all? Have you just walking on there? Hey, hey, hey. No! Great ever wickedness, no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises today, I will not enter into your hands. Have you commanded it? It's not my word, church. Let's go to uh, uh, 14. The earth is changed like clay into which a seal is pressed. And the things of the earth stand out like a multicolored garment. Take me to 15. Their light is withheld from the wicked. And the up, and the, the uplifted arm is what? Broken. You can decree against wickedness for your day early in the morning. Do you know that? That's what the word of God is telling us. It's not my word. It's not my word. You can rise up and, de and decree how your day will go. Yeah. Yeah. We shall decree a thing and what happens to it? Shall be established. Let's go to one more. Uh, to, we are taking to one more scripture and then one scripture will round up. But guys, let the consciousness of who we are in prayer, let it begin to arise. Hallelujah. Let's begin to stand up upon our high places. Psalm 18. Let's begin to rise up. Let's begin prayer. Say pray without ceasing. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. I'm not saying that challenges will not come. I'm not saying that temptation will not come. But God says I will keep you away from that hour of temptation. And why did he say watch? So that I will keep you away from the hour of temptation. So watching is one of the ways that God prepares us for this hour of temptation. And God cannot give us a word and he does not watch over his word to perform it. Praise God. Have you commanded your money? Let us take hold of our days. And it begins with the morning watch. Take hold of your day. God will give you directions. God will give you instructions. God will drop things to you. And as we begin to believe God, as you move on in that day, you begin to see some things that God has warned you about. We are spirit beings, guys. Let's not underutilize the power of God that he has given to us. Let's not underestimate who we are. The Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him how? Spirit. And how does spirit worship spirit? It means some of these natural things to cool down. Sometimes it is more sensitive for you, spirit to spirit, to communicate with spirits. Don't say, hey, bro, are you witch? I'm not be winch. <laughs> but the spirit of God dwells inside me. If you call that winch, then I'm winch. But you must know that some part of you is spirit, Sister Odo. Some part of you is spirit. <laughs> if your husband fear, make you know. <laughs> because when you see, say, hey, now spirit be this, so make her take care. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the Bible says, be careful. <laughs> they, they careful how you hold this woman. They are weaker versus so yeah, your prayer has been on in that. The spirit is ready with like that. You touch and God vex. So there are some things there. I beg, I beg. I remember one, one man. Eh? The man is laid down, but he was Christian. He said, he said when you see where for night they fear. Especially when he has done wicked things. You go fear because the spirit they lie down there. I'm telling you the truth. The spirit they there. But you know, say, no be, no be, no be, no be Anita. No, no be Anita. God days. <laughs> Small time ago, tell you, what did you do yesterday? He said, ah, I mean, me. how you know what I do yesterday? God will minister to you. Hallelujah. Psalm 18. God, glory be to God. God is showing us that this pillar of prayer is, a, is one of the foundations. Let us not play with it. Our victory, our ability to survive in these days will rest on, on what that, not, all the, not only that, oh, but that along with the other four pillars. Psalm 18, and take me to verse. We cannot take the whole day. Let's go to 14. Let's go to 14. We'll take 14 to 23. Psalm 18, and we'll go to 14. We'll go to uh, 14. Yes. 
I'm seeing something in that. Is that what I'm supposed to be reading? Psalm 8, I'm sorry. Psalm 8, please, bear with me. I was wondering. Psalm 8, Psalm 8, and we'll go to 14. Please, 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 I'm sorry I'm taking time, but these are scriptures. Be like the Berean Christians. Don't, don't believe me, but go and read the word of God. And before I end, let me also tell you about the prayer. Because I keep forgetting that. We'll look at some eight now. But you see how many pieces of furniture are in the holy place? Somebody help me. Huh? Three. Huh? Holy place. Two in the outer court. Two in the holy place. Two in the holy of holies. Is that not so? Outer court. Brazen altar. Brazen liver. Holy place, what? Golden camp, uh, lampstand, right? Table of showbread. What's the third one? Golden altar of incense. It talks about prayer. That golden altar of incense is about prayer. When you eat, you, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is a lampstand. The table of showbread is the nature of God. You are partaking of the 12 breads every day. You are partaking of God, yes. But that which is the golden altar, if you don't pass through the God, you cannot enter into the holy altar. It's prayer. You burn incense unto God. It's prayer. We can look at some. Let's, let's, let's go to that before we go to, so that we don't miss that. Let's look at Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. So when they tell you of that furniture, you see the furniture, that seven pieces of furniture, there are various experiences in the our journey with God. Outer court before you were born again, your your sins were washed away. The brazen altar, the brazen lever, those that talk about your experience as you enter into Christ, holy place, the Holy Ghost. You get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You begin to partake of the nature of God. The twelve tribes, the twelve be, uh, loaves of bread upon the showbread. The golden altar is, is is at the entrance. You cannot pass. You cannot enter into the Holy of Holies without passing through. You know it's incense. It's prayer. <laughs> Let's go. Revelation. No, sorry. Isaiah 56. Before we get to, to that, Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56, and we take 6 and 7 so that we can move quickly. 6 and 7. What does it say? Also, the sons of the stranger. Are we, are we original Jews? Eh? Are we sons of the stranger? Okay. The sons of the strangers that do what? Join themselves unto God to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take hold of my word, covenant. Give me seven. Let one, let's take it together. One, two. Even them will I do what? Bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful where? In my house of prayer. Why? Their bond offerings and their sacrifices shall what? Shall be acceptable upon my altar. Why? For my house shall be called the house of prayer. For how many people? Oh, people? That's the entrance. That's the entrance. Hallelujah. There are more scriptures, but I don't know whether I want to look at it. We can look at Revelation. Let's look at Revelation uh, 8. Let's look at Revelation 8. 3 to 4. Revelation 8, 3 to 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Do what? Having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much what? Incense. Incense talks about prayer. That he should do what? Offer it with what? The prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. That golden altar of incense that we see as furniture, it represents the prayers of the saints. And uh, C.C. Winans, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For to you are all things. And through you are all things. You deserve the glory. It's prayer. It's prayer. May we be a praying people. May we bring incense unto God. 
is a fundamental part of our relationship with God. It will deliver us from the hour of temptation. Hey. Hallelujah. Let's, we'll take that song. Don't worry. Just keep it. Just keep, hold on it. Hallelujah. Because the Spirit wants us to take that song tonight, this morning. But let's go to, um, where, where were we? Eh? Psalm 8. Hallelujah. We'll take Psalm 8 and we'll take one more scripture and we'll pray. Oh, blessed be God. Let God anoint us with the anointing of prayer. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a sweet experience. Oh, blessed be God. You wake in that morning watch and you begin to, when you begin your day, you begin to move into life with confidence. Say, we are made partakers with Christ. If we do what? If we hold our confidence steadfastly from when? The beginning till the end. Part of it is commanding your morning. You and God, you begin your day. Hey, hallelujah. Psalm, what? Eight, right? Is it eight? Let's go to 14. 14, verse 14. Somebody say, is there no 14? Eh? Are you sure? Okay, maybe I'm, I'm giving you a different quotation. Don't worry. We'll get there. Hallelujah. Don't worry. We are there. Okay. Don't worry. Keeping our watch. Okay. Don't worry. We are there. Proverbs. I'm sorry. Oh, please forgive me. I feel like you slapping me. <laughs> Proverbs 8. I, I'm so sorry. Please. I feel like being slapped for being so foolish. How can I call Proverbs? Isaiah. Proverbs 8. Oh, my God. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Proverbs 8. Oh my God. And we go to 14. Hallelujah. And I want us to look at this scripture quietly. No jump jump. You know, at times understanding the word of God eh, comes when you are quiet. That's why I say be still and know I am God. Now how did this start? Cancel is mine. Abi? And sound wisdom I am understanding and I have strength. So it's like counsel is talking to you. Sound wisdom is talking to you. Understanding is talking to you. And the strength that comes with it is talking to you. Let's go to verse 15. What did he say? By me, what? Kings reign. <laughs> and princes do what? Counsel. <laughs> that counsel, oh. Now they talk so. Is it understanding? Strength. By me, kings reign. So it's telling you the secret of kings reigning. And princes decreeing what? Justice. Cancel. Okay. So go. By me, what? Princes rule. And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. So all these judges where you see, now cancel. <laughs> then they ask God for cancel. Then they ask God for wisdom. Okay. So move on. I love them that love me. Eh? Who, is, who is talking, saying that? Cancel and might, wisdom and strength. I love them that do what? That love me. What does it do? Who, who are they that, that, that love him? And those that what? When? Shall find me. When do you seek him early? In the early watch. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can look at other scriptures. Though that seek me early, well, I love you say, when, what will happen to them? They shall find me. You can seek wisdom and cancer early in the morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, you say early, early. It means when I'm 15 years old. Oh, you say early. No, when I'm a, a fresh born, but early. Early watch. Morning watch. Early. I seek you wisdom. Give me wisdom today. Those that seek me, what shall happen? They shall find me. I love them that seek me. Wisdom and counsel wants you to seek him. He loves those that seek him. And he says, early in the morning, seek me. Early in the morning, seek me. How do I begin my day? How do I carry out this thing? Wisdom is the principal thing in all your, your knowledge. Uh, what? Eh? 
Get wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. He said, find me in the morning. Find me when? In the morning. Okay, move on. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. Riches and honor <laughs> are with me. That, that thing that you seek in the morning. He says, durable riches, durable, not the one way you do today. Tomorrow it disappears. The one way go last. Durable riches and what? Because some people say, ah, no one riches. So God, I lose righteousness. I double, I double portion. They give you riches and righteousness. But seek me early. I love them that seek me when? Early. Hallelujah. Now let's move. My fruit is what? It's better than who is talking? Counsel and understanding. Strength and wisdom is the one talking. My fruit is what? Better than gold. Yeah, than fine gold. And what? My revenue, what you gain from me, what you derive from me, <laughs> Sister Gwemi, is better than choice silver. Hallelujah. And when do you find me? Early in the morning. Glory be to God. Now let's go. Where are we stopping? Because we, it's not an everlasting message. We are stopping in verse 23. I lead in the way of what? <laughs> That's counsel and mind that you seek in the morning. And in the midst of the parties, of the part of what? Judgment. It's, judgments are just and true. Let's take 21 together. That I may cause those that love me to do what? To inherit substance. And what will I do? I will fill their treasures. Is it talking to me? Yes. <laughs> it's talking to you. If you seek me, you will find me. Lord, may we seek you. Let's go to the next one. We are going to 23. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. And we'll, run, we'll land at 23. I was set up from everlasting. From the beginning or ever the earth was. Praise God. Let's round up with one last scripture. And then we'll take that song. You are worthy of it all. To you are all things. Whew, hallelujah. And day and night, night and day, let our incense arise to you, O Lord. Hallelujah. We are looking at a psalm. Hallelujah. Don't mind this, you know. Just keeps trying to disappear from me. Blessed be God. Psalm 130. Psalm 130. And we'll go to verses 5 and 6. I don't know whether I can ask you to stand. You know, you're all big people, but please permit me. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Psalm 130. And let's go to 5. five. Hallelujah. I wait. Let's go. Are we ready? One, two. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. In his word do I hope. Hallelujah. Let's take six. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Tell God, help me to watch for you. Let's begin to ask God. You have little strength. Your strength is little. Hallelujah. But you have kept my word. You have not denied my name. Lord, help me to keep this word. Let me not be like when you came the first time. I, you are sleeping. The second time you are sleeping. The third time you are sleeping. <laughs> say, say, sleep. <laughs> you don't need to watch again. Watch that you do not fall into temptation. Oh, oh say Telibosh. All the sins are 